right, everybody here applauding uh, the Australians as the right winners of this match, especially David Kirk. Poignant moments for you with the cup passing on to another Antipodean country. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it was a, you know, it was a poignant moment. It's nice, though. I'm, I feel that in some ways the burden's left it. They, did, they nothing... deserve it, you don't know. Oh, absolutely. But England were superb in the second half. They were yeah. wonderful, uh, wonderful yeah. losers, if you like. Gareth? Yeah, I think England can be proud of their rugby team today. But in fairness, Australia were a great side deserved their championship. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay, we have uh, other people to talk to. Let's go downstairs again. Simon Poitman, you took some big hits out there. Major defence going on. Yeah, there was some major defence going on, but obviously a lot at stake. And uh, just firstly, thanks to all the people back at home for the fantastic support. We've got, I think, 50,000 faxes from, uh, from Australia, and it's really great. As a game, how's it compared to last week against the All Blacks? Just as hard? Well, it's, it's always going to be uh, harder, but uh, obviously the All Black game was, a, I think, a faster game. This one got tied down a bit. That's not a surprise. Both uh, teams playing with a lot to lose. At the end of the day, Australia's there. Your skipper is here. Nick, come in. Thanks, thanks Roger. Well done. You took a couple of knocks as well. A, a very tough game. Yeah, just one on the head, but gee, it's worthwhile. I was just saying to some of the older guys, Poido, uh, Campo, Noddy, Everything that we've done in rugby is worthwhile when you get the Webb Ellis Trophy. It's just, uh, it is a dream come true. It's fantastic. The feeling starting to sink in? No, I think it'll take quite some time. I don't think it'll sink in before we get home and uh, we see what the supporters got to say when we got home. But as Simon said, the support has been tremendous. It really lifted us. I mean, for our team to come through, trial us in uh, the semi-final and then the final, it just shows you what the team's made about. It's just total courage. And what's ahead for you guys? Well, I don't care. I mean, I'm going to have a good night with my team and my family and, uh, you know, I'm going to decide in February or something like that. But uh, whatever's ahead, it's going to be good. And a uh, big effort from Willie O today. Maybe saved his best till last. Tremendous run. I mean, that broken field running really lifted us. And that uh, the kickoff in the second half, we had to start well. We had to try and score first. I mean, we didn't score first. But when Willie made that run down the sideline, it lifted the whole team. Congratulations Thanks to you, Bob. Thank you. And we add our congratulations to Nick Farr Jones, the Australian captain, as well. They were simply the, the best all round team on the day, weren't they? They were. They took their opportunities. In fact, they created more opportunities than England. Although England had the ball and ran. They didn't create clear opportunities the way Australia did. They're a very courageous, very talented yeah. team. England ran them all today, more than we've seen them during the whole of the competition, well, Gareth. England played very, very well. Let's not take that away from them. But they were beaten by a better side on day. But England played very well. Lots of untidinesses, though, from time to time, weren't they? Yes, that's always going to bit of nerves, the odd ball going loose. And I thought, uh, I think uh, Clive will say, the referee refereed it superbly as well. You were saying throughout this match that that's not the place to practice running with the ball in the final of the World Cup. Is that, was that your... That's your... what I was saying. It's too late. I mean, although they did run the ball and ran it effectively the last last pass bent to ground, the positioning wasn't quite right. Too much pressure to just start doing that. They should have done it in the second half against Scotland yeah. when they were dominating position so yeah. much. And when I say they're an all-round team, when England came back hard in the latter part of the of the second half, the Australian defence was so solid, wasn't it? Well, we saw, they sowed against the New Zealanders in the second half over in Dublin. That's their strength. They score points, they hang on, they come back again, they hang on. Their defence is the best in the world, and that's really what's won them the tournament. Five, a good, a good game for a World Cup final, well refereed, uh, no apparent violence of any sort, of sort I detected. No controversy, the, the final will be remembered for the, uh, the defence of the Australians and the attacking of the English in the second half. I thought it was a very enjoyable final. Well, we just take a pause there to draw breath, and after the break we will, uh, in fact, be looking at some of the crucial moments in the match, but we'll be back in just a moment. Roll and uh, and then this game, uh, we, we had very much the better of the first half hour, I thought, and then uh, we couldn't seem to do anything that was right. We either lost possession or gave away a penalty, one or the other, and it was we were we were under a lot of we we're under a lot of pressure. That's for sure. Did England play the way you expected? Um, they didn't. They certainly didn't use uh, the high kick uh, no, into the box serious, area uh, well, we as much as uh, <laughs> as much as we would have liked. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell That's you what, I've dreamt out. about this it's for a year. <laughs> Kemba, you didn't see much ball out there. No, I was very unlucky. The first uh, touch I did get when I kicked to the header. My soccer schools are getting a bit bad, I think. There's too much, uh, not enough practice of training. Yeah, I thought it was a certain try, actually. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, that's how it goes. Some days the ball doesn't go your way, but the result there. Yeah, well, I think it's um, like the last 20 minutes, I was really worried because we kept on giving penalties away and we weren't seeing much ball. And when we did, when we did kick it, it wasn't going out. But I mean, uh, I think I was very happy for my defensive performance today. I mean, Rory Underwood had got a lot more ball than I did, but all I was trying to do was stop him. And um, if you can't get the ball, you've got to stop your opponents. That's all I tried to do today. I know you've been hitting the tackle bags all tour. It's just as well the last yeah, two games. Hasn't the last game? <laughs> they certainly gave him plenty of practice today. Every time they'd move the ball up midfield, back it to go towards Camper. Yeah. And, and a big kicking game, both from you and Michael today. You had to, had to find some big touch finders. Oh, yeah, I think that was, um, you know, when we're in our 22, you know, we've got the kickers, we've got a couple of guys and kick it a long way and they got us out of trouble a few times. But 
you know, at the end of the day, we won, so that's what I'm really worried about. <laughs> David, there's a, a move in New South Wales Parliament to try and talk you out of retirement. What, what, right? what's, what's the final word? Just haven't they got anything else to talk about at home? <laughs> <laughs> well, nothing more important than that. Nothing more? Sure. Oh, yeah, right. Eh? Oh, no, I'll see what happens, obviously, in six months' time. Who knows what I'll be doing? You know, this is my 10th season straight, as I said before, and winning this, I think it's, uh, you know, pull off a great year, won three premierships, and what else can you do in rugby? So. We'll just see what happens next year. Beat South Africa. Beat South Africa. <laughs> oh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> You've given us all a lot of pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much. Thank well, David Campesi there uh, referring to that uh, try that got away, the ball bobbling all over the place. And I suppose, uh, Clive, we'll have, we'll have a look at that in just a moment. He would have scored that on any other occasion, but the ball dropped very badly for him. That's right. I mean, uh, he's a great controller of the ball, whether it's on the ground or whether it's in the air, basically. Um, today, unfortunately, the odd shape of the rugby ball, that's the great thing about rugby, you don't know where the ball's actually going to roll, etc. Yeah. Well, let's have a look at it. We can see it now, exactly what happened. It fell badly for him. You explain the ins and outs of this for now. Well, he was given space to move in, and the ideal thing for a winger is to do, turn the defence and kick ahead, clean ahead, and the ball on this occasion, as you see, doesn't sit up for him unlike last week. This is the crucial bit here. It hits the referee there, and the referee taps it back over. So although Winterbottom has fallen on it, because the referee's touched the ball, He's got to give a scrum five to Australia. He tried to kick it on, didn't he? That's what he tried to do. Yes, it didn't sit up enough for him to take it like uh, Liner's chip last week, which sat perfectly for him. He didn't make quite the impact on this final that we expected, though, did he? No, I don't think he did. I think he was uh, well looked after by Mr. Underwood and vice versa, and uh, he seemed to defend well against Underwood. But nine times out of ten, Campisi would have scored that try, and it was maybe just going against him a little bit. But, okay. Uh, well, I'm going to ask you, uh, David, to talk about the try that actually was scored by Australia because that was uh, a real pack effort, wasn't it? It was. It was a very well-worked try. The ball goes into Opengawa, which is an unusual place to throw the ball. Teague's up supporting, so Opengawa has a, a clear jump. And they come in behind quickly. They've got the ball under control. You can see the England weight is on the left-hand side as we look at it. So they come around. They twist to the left. The ball's transferred from hand-to-hand. -hand. Dirtwood is in a great position. Yeah, so we, we had... Uh... Here, here's another look at it, actually. You see Teague's up close and so Uffengawa takes the unusual throw behind them, they control the ball, twisting around, more yellows than whites there, and as you'll see, number one, that's a great try to him, number three. Now then, are you, uh, are you surprised about the way England played this game? A little bit surprised. I wasn't surprised that they looked to move the ball more than they had in any of their other matches. They definitely had to score points because they knew Australia would score points. A little bit surprised the way they moved it in a helter-skelter, sometimes uncontrolled way. Gareth? I, I thought Australia was were superb today. The best side on the day one, um, but England could be proud of their performance. Yeah, right. Yes, I think Australia throughout the tournament, Frank, have been superb and, and deserved winners at the end of the day. But congratulations to England for really making a fight to it in the final. I let you talk about this one because uh, England came back very uh, spiritedly, didn't Strongly. they? Towards the Strongly. <laughs> towards the end of the second half. Richard Hill, we, we had a spell where we were in loose play, and as you say, it was scrappy. There's Jerry Usey, but Far Jones, great tackle by Far Jones. Underwood always threatening, but Campisi, you talk about his defence, but he's always shadowing Underwood today. But for Jones, that tackle on Guska, nine times out of ten again, Guska would have just done that arc and got away from him. Yeah. A great captain's tackle. And there you are, you're saying they're practicing, they were practicing in the wrong match, weren't they? I mean, the point was that Australia have practiced and practiced and played the way they play, uh, because that's, that's the way that gets results, and England haven't really, one imagines. Well, finals require precision, and a few mistakes here and there, a missed pass, a drop pass, a wrong option, wins and loses finals, and Australia played the way they played throughout the tournament. Yeah. England played a new style. It's difficult to be precise with a new style in the big occasion. OK, uh, we've got uh, Jeff Cook now. He's with Jim Rosenthal. Let's hear from him. Jeff Cook, what was the difference between the two sides? Well, Australia took their chance, and uh, we didn't take several of ours, and uh, little things turned the game away from us. But, uh, you know, I think uh, we've every reason to be proud of the players, and I just hope all the supporters depart the disappointment of today uh, feel that the team has done them proud. I'm certainly very proud of them. You just couldn't crack their defence, could you? No, credit to Australia. They defended magnificently. We knew they had a good defence. We tried to find ways of breaking it down. We were almost through once or twice. And then, as I say, little things, a little bit of carelessness, a little bit of anxiety on the pass, not quite the precision. And uh, unfortunately, when they scored their try, you know, things just ran away from us a little bit. But, uh, you know, a great performance, really. You changed your tactics pretty significantly, didn't you? Was there a stage where you thought it just all might work, it just might go England's way? Yeah, I thought it was. Uh, I thought we had the better of the game. In fact, uh, that's perhaps a biased view, but I really thought we had the better of the game. But they did defend well, and I say we just couldn't make the last pass tell or get the last man free. And uh, it was one of those days today, so near yet uh, so far. 
Well, your skipper, Will Carling, has joined us here. Will, uh, a pretty emotional afternoon it, it turned out for you. I mean, up there at the end, you, you look pretty emotional. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a great six weeks, you know. It's been a lot of hard work from the whole squad, the management, everyone, and uh, it, it's sad that it ends that way, but I was very proud, very, very proud, and the, the team played very well, played very hard, and, yeah, some very sad men around. Jeff's spoken about those little things that didn't go your way today. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I think we rushed one or two little areas. The ball just seemed to run away from us at vital times. But uh, I thought we, we played exceptionally well. And, we, you know, we did run some, some great ball and played some great rugby. And at the end of the day, it just wasn't, uh, wasn't going to be. I guess it's always easy to say, isn't it? But if you'd only just managed to cross that line, perhaps uh, you could be holding the trophy. Yes, I think, you know, they scored the vital try. Uh, went nine points ahead, which in a game that was always going to be that close was, was rather a, a big margin, and we, we struggled to come back from that. But, you know, I'm very proud of, uh, of what the whole side, the whole squad have done, and uh, it's just sad we couldn't have won. Mm. Just uh, try and tell us what the emotion is like in the dressing room at the moment, if you can. Oh, the, you know, it's just uh, very depressed, really, that it was so close, and, you know, we'll never get the chance again with, with this group of players when they've done so much. I think, you know, they would have loved to have finished on a high note, but, uh, you know, it's, it's important that I go and pick them up, and I think they'll pick each other up over the evening, and uh, maybe it won't seem so bad in the morning. Jeff, this team's done a lot for you, hasn't it? Oh, they've been magnificent. It's, it's been just a privilege to be involved with them, and uh, as I said, you know, we, we're grateful to the terrific support we've had, the thousands of good wishes, the cards, the letters, the telegrams. And in a way, you just, as Will said, you just feel sad that we couldn't finish on a high note. But uh, there's so much to be proud of. We've just been privileged to be part of it. Absolutely. You gave it a... Well, as uh, Terry Venables used to say, uh, Will Carling, you know, the boy done terrific, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, he he's did. been a good captain he's and a learning a cap captain. Yeah, he's been a good captain. He's led them through some tough times with the media and with, with the public at times. And he's done a good job and he's held it together on the field. Improved his tactical appreciation has improved remarkably. He's been a very good captain. And it's certainly no disgrace to have won a final like this and got so far in it. Oh, it? we've done magnificently well. We went to Paris, we've gone to Murrayfield, and we've done ourselves proud in the final. The, as I say, the best side won a day, but England can have a drink tonight. They'll be disappointed, but they've done England's, done English rugby proud. Fine. Five? Yeah, I think they've done British rugby proud at the end of the day. I mean, mm. to go to France and win, and then to go to Murrayfield and win, and try to pull it out for three weeks running in front was tremendous effort. And they, their entire attitude shouldn't be downplayed. I mean, they will be disappointed at the mm. moment, but come tomorrow, they'll be pleased with the effort yeah. they put in. Well, there's somebody else in front of our cameras down below in the tunnel there. I think uh, Roger Utley, his last game, of course, is the England coach. Roger, it's all over now. Yeah. You pack, the, you pack this job in. Uh huh. Don't you? Day job, yeah. Don't you? And, That's uh, right. We had, we had a, a look at you a couple of times uh, oh, yeah. on the touchline. It was a quite a action, tense afternoon for yeah. you. Yeah, but uh, a great game of rugby, and I think uh, for a final of that caliber to take place at this stage of a, a long tournament, there's uh, a great credit to both teams, really. And uh, Australia really proved in the end that their defence was uh, really very solid, and we found it very difficult to break down and uh, ended up on the losing side. Hard to say, isn't it, Rog? But uh, you must feel that Australia are worthy world champions. Oh, absolutely. No, I mean, there's no, no doubt about that. And uh, they performed fantastically well throughout the tournament, really. And uh, we knew it was going to be a, a major hurdle today. I thought the, uh, the forwards responded magnificently, you know, with people like the, the big man here. And... Uh, it's uh, just a great pity, really, that uh, we didn't gel really in the backs and uh, lost a bit of direction midway through that uh, third quarter and it just allowed them to come back in. Just finally, if there's one aspect where Australia were better than us, what do you think that was? Um, uh, they were just a little bit sharper out wide, really, and they had to do a lot of defending and they did that extremely well. Thanks very much, Roger. Uh, Let's move uh, Wade Dooley in here. Played quite an afternoon for you it obviously hasn't turned out the way you would have wanted but uh, England put up quite a performance out there I think it's fair to say that there's a lot of disappointed lads sat in that uh, changing room now we, uh, we were pleased with the way it went up front but uh, we just never really got the uh, ascendancy we did well in the line outs held them in the scrimmage but they defended like demons we can't, uh, can't take it away from the Australians who were the better team on the day was there any stage in the game where, where you thought we're going to do it? We're going to crack this lot? Because they always just seem, to my mind, to be that little bit ahead of you. The whole of the second half, I mean, we said at half time that we're just going to throw everything at them. We had nothing to lose then. We were 10 points down, and it was just a match of throwing everything into them, which we did. I think it's, uh, it's fair to say that the boys up front were tremendous. And the backs tried everything out, uh, out wide. 
and as I say, the Australians just defended uh, defended like demons. So I think it was uh, certainly a better game for the people to watch, and uh, the, the better team on the day won. What about from your point of view now, Wade? You've given everything to this England setup, haven't you? What, what what's your international future? Do you think? Well, I'm not. Uh, I'll just spend a bit of time with the family. I'll reflect on what's going on over the last five weeks and I'll make a decision probably later in the week. I think Jeff, Jeff is going to approach most of the players in the next fortnight and just ask them what, uh, what the plans are. So I'll take a week or so to, uh, to decide on that. Mm. But a great day for you nonetheless, even though the result hasn't gone your way. Yes, a great game of rugby, I think, whatever. Okay, Wayne, well, well done, thanks a lot. Well, lots of tributes to the Australians. I don't think there's any doubt in anybody's mind that they thoroughly deserve their victory here this afternoon. Lots more reaction to come. We've still got uh, 20 minutes or so to be on the air after this break. I'm going to make you great again. The people want you back. Morning, Stacey. Morning. Any messages? Your garage, your dentist, your club, and your mother. Just a little reminder. If you register for a prospectus for the BT share offer, you could qualify for incentives. Please start to be cozy. Phone 0272 272 272. To demonstrate German engineering in Tyre, our stunt driver tested Continental to the limit. Continental Tyres, German engineering, where you need it most on a car. Pick up any tips? Yeah. Always rub salt on a wine stain and never trust a man in a tank top. How about you? Sure fire winner straight from the horse's mouth. Of course you mind. Hey, are. And they're off. So what's this dead cert then? Curd and beast contender. I'd have thought Wayward Lab was more your speed. <coughs> McEwen's export. Class in a class. There is a location that's ideally suited for you and your business. With everything you need right on your doorstep. You know when you find the right location. It's called Cumbernauld. to be you it had to be you I wandered around and finally found somebody who could make me be true could make me be blue or even be glad just to be sad thinking of you
Well, we were posing the question at 10 past one this afternoon as uh, whose hands would be on the cup. Well, those hands belong to David Campesi and Nick Farr-Jones, one of each. And they've won here at uh, Twickenham this afternoon, beating England in the final by 12 points. Well, now then, let's uh, talk to Michael Liner and see how he's enjoying his success. Michael Liner, what do you remember of the game? You're telling me before it's a bit of a blur. Yeah, it sure was. It was pretty quick and uh, uh, been looking forward to sitting down and watching it on replay. But I, I really can't remember too much of it. It was that quick. It just was going from one end to the other. But uh, great excitement in the dressing. You kicked a few goals and that must be a, a great pleasure for you after the troubles you've had. Yeah, saves it up for the big one at the end. And uh, yeah, I was glad to see the second one go over and uh, especially that penalty goal in the second half. That was a long range one. There was a lot of wind out there today and uh, yeah, they're coming off the boot very nicely. Second half, a bit of a carbon copy of what happened last week. You didn't get much ball, a lot of defending. Yeah, it sure was, and the England team uh, certainly ran it around at us. And, uh, you know, lucky we had a bit of practice last week against the All Blacks because we certainly had to pull out some big tackles today. What was the feeling in the last 10 minutes? I mean, England was still in it. Oh, they sure were. Well, it was one of desperation and, uh, you know, wanting to make more tackles and just, just trying to get the ball and get it down the other end of the field, really. And, uh, gee, it was a uh, great effort by all the guys. Well, here in our studio at Twickenham, we've been joined by Gordon Brown, who's uh, on the end of our row. But um, I, I want to ask uh, Gareth Chilcott, first of all, what, in the broader sense, what effects will this World Cup have on British rugby, do you think? Is, is it just kind of sea change in a way? I hope so. I mean, now that all the passion of the final's over, I hope that it's youngsters start to enjoy the game. I hope we learn from the Southern Hemisphere and they learn from us. Hopefully it will promote the game in, in the British Isles, in, in sides will start to develop. Gordon, you said at some stage during the early part of this uh, World Cup that you hoped that your son would want to play rugby in six years' time. Do you think he will as a result of watching these games? Well, he certainly hasn't been put off rugby. And all his chums are as keen as mustard and, and still are. You know, the, the great thing about this, this World Cup for me is the, the general interest that it has created all over the country. And I mean, I'm quite sure that there's hundreds of thousands of people that have tuned in today that have never ever watched any rugby match in their lives before. But has the game presented itself well to those new viewers? Well, I would say today that, that you know, we, we actually had a far, far better game than anyone could ever have imagined or hoped for. And England have got a lot to be thanked for that. I've really got to say that. Now, tell me, if there are youngsters watching who are fired with enthusiasm, Gareth, what, what should they do? I mean, do they just go along to the nearest club and knock on the door? Or what? I think they should. They should. Their fathers should take them along to their local clubs, get involved with mini rugby, junior setups, all clubs. It baths, Sunday, there's 300 kids, and most clubs are like that through the country now. Get involved, learn the tradition of the game, and get on and play. It's a great and, sport. And are the clubs in a receptive mood? Because they've got their part to play. Will they be welcomed when they well, go? The, the clubs are crying out for youngsters just now. They're desperate to get youngsters in because, you know, the schools have actually stopped doing rugby in Britain by and large. Mm. And because of that, the youngsters have to go to the rugby clubs, and the rugby clubs are desperate for the children. David, obviously we're having an essentially British conversation here, but obviously it refers to, to all countries who've taken part, doesn't it? I mean, I gather in Australia, for example, there's huge interest where it's not really their prime sport. Well, absolutely. In fact, it's the third sport in Australia behind Australian rules and rugby league. Um, I think this raises the question of, of how the game is administered and, and what the central bodies in, all the, in the world and also in all the countries do about capturing this great interest and upsurge which has been created, and that has a lot to do with how they spend the money. I was going to come on to administrators because they are very, very important, and they seem to be pulling in two directions. Now, there are great traditionalists who don't really want this game to change at all, and there are other people who want to lead it forward. Well, who's going to win that battle? Well, I, personally, I think this World Cup couldn't have come at a better time as far as opening things up is concerned to allow the players to now make money away from the game itself. There's still no money in the game uh, from the playing point of view. But there's one thing, there's a lot of questions that have to be asked and a lot of answers are going to have to come out of this World Cup from the administration of the ticket allocation. Because, I mean, I know it's been a colossal headache for the administrators because uh, they didn't know who was going to take part in the quarterfinals or the semifinals. But what about the money? I mean, there's been money slurping around this whole organisation from sponsors and television and so on. The players getting virtually nothing. Yes, we certainly need to look at our sport. As I've, I, I, as I've said before, we need to keep players in the game. We need to encourage them. And I've never, ever wanted to be played for, paid for playing rugby, but we should but help people out. Yeah, but that's all we need to do. We don't need, the players should not have a disbursement from the money yeah. that's been raised. Yeah. That money should go into developing the game worldwide exactly. and setting up organisation structures and, yeah. and playing structures all around the world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, those are very important issues. As it will. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very important issues as this World Cup comes to close. Now, amongst the uh, 60 odd thousand fans here today were 10 lucky winners of the Heinz Golden Tri competition. I'm sure they would have enjoyed a champagne day out. And you could buy yourself quite a few crates of bubbly as we run this popular competition now for the last time. A substantial cash prize to the winner, 
plus an original captain's poster autographed by the skippers of all 16 World Cup teams. Just pick the best of the best coming up. Try A, Ivan Francescato for Italy against the USA. Chance here for Francescato. The Italians come home. Tremendous play by him. Will he score? Oh, my word. An outstanding try by Ivan Francescato. Try B, Hiroyuki Kajihara, Japan against Ireland. To Yoshida. Good break by Yoshida. Getting by Jack Clark. Danger here for Ireland. Saunders tries to take his corner mark. Jim Staples has a good tackle. Comes into Matsuo. And it's going to be a second try for Japan. Great try. Try C. Vaiga Twigamala for New Zealand against Italy. And on the first again, then is Twigamala. What a great sight he is. As he goes powering for the line himself. Twigamala. Looking to get the scoring pass, now going all the way himself. Oh my word, what a magnificent try then by Vaiga Tuigamara. Try D, David Campesi in the quarter-final, Australia against Ireland. Line of it, to Horan. Campesi popping up in midfield. Tremendous run by Campesi. Oh my word, what a superb try by David Campesi. Try E, David Campesi again in the semi-final, Australia against New Zealand. Bar Jones, Campesi, David Campesi, David Campesi all the way! And try F, Tim Horan for Australia in the same semi-final. Bar Jones digs it out, Liner, chip ahead, Horan's going to chase that, so is Campesi. Campesi gets it in his... So pick your favourite try from these six. Try A, Ivan Francescato. Try B, Hiroyuki Kajihara. Try C, Vaiga Twigamala. Try D, David Campesi. Try E, David Campesi again. And try F, Tim Horan. Now the winner will receive the original of our captain's poster and a substantial catch prize. The number to ring, 0898 3322211. Ten runners-up will each receive a copy of the captain's poster Dame Kiri's World in Union CD and videos of both World Cup semi-finals England against Scotland, Australia against New Zealand The number once again, 0898 3322211 Good luck! Uh, this uh, very handsome uh, salver or plate will in fact be uh, presented tonight at the big dinner by Tony O'Reilly, the managing director of Heinz Food to the, the man who has won that particular try competition that we've just announced today. And you'll need to get your call in fairly rapidly because the phone lines will close at 8 o'clock tonight. And then there's the Fair Play Trophy. Uh, Tony O'Reilly will also present that, so the Heinz Fair Play Trophy. And uh, we've just heard, because the assessors have been sitting, and as I speak, I'm bringing you the news, that Zimbabwe have got the Fair Play Award. How about that? Oh, eh? That's nice for them. They certainly didn't... Uh, <laughs> they never threatened to win the tournament, so it's oh. nice of them. But they gave us a, a lot of... A lot of are are already going to fly back to collect it? <laughs> <laughs> they certainly give Scotland a break, I'll tell you. Okay. That's tired prop. Well, of course, <laughs> that's all going on tonight at the Farewell Dinner. We're going to take a short break now. We'll be back. <laughs> Attractive wheel trims, special livery, and sunroofs. The new Fiesta Duets are extremely desirable. At under seven thousand pounds on the road, they're simply irresistible. Scottish Ford dealers working a good deal harder. a new runway de-icer, which is more effective at clearing snow and ice.
It's also kinder to the surrounding countryside, which is reassuring, however you choose to fly. of everything at B&Q. And that's right up till Monday night. Oh. B&Q. With 25% of everything, you just have to tell somebody. 